Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is how to make an object move along a spline path. So if you want something to move along a very specific path within your game this is a perfect way to do that. You can draw out the spline to go wherever you want and you can customize this object to follow it perfectly either just the location or the location and the rotation and we're also going to go over how you can modify the speed and have it dynamic for any kind of different object you want to have on this path as well or any other path in your game. So let me hit simulate here and show you what it is we're going to make today. So you can see we have this cube here and this spline path that I've drawn and as you can see the cube is following along this spline path perfectly like so. I've got it so it's going to take five seconds to go around the whole path and you can see it's following the location and the rotation and this is what we'll be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to actually create our spline path blueprint. And this is very, very easy. What we can do is hit control space to open up our content browser. We're going to right click in some empty space, create a blueprint class, and we're just going to create an actor. I'm going to name this one BP underscore spline path as that makes the most sense for me, but you can name this whatever you want. For example, you might want to be more specific as to what this actually is or not because you can use this for any path that you want. This doesn't, you don't have to create a new blueprint for each one. So we're going to open that up straight away. And all we need to do in here is simply add a component and add in a spline. Now you'll notice you've got spline nav modifier, spline mesh and spline. We just want the simple spline here like so, just spline. Now, if you wanted, you can also add in a mesh in here as well for like a road or a path or a wall, for example, anything along those lines. But today I'm just going over not having a custom mesh on this, just having a spline path like so. And that's all we need to do within this blueprint. We just need to add in the spline and that is all we need to do. We can now close this straight away like so. Next, we're going to create the object that is actually going to move along our spline path. Now again, you don't need to create a new one for every single object. We can make this custom and dynamic. So what I'm going to do is right click again and create a blueprint class, creating an actor once again, and I'm going to name this one BP underscore spline object. You could just name this cube, for example, but I'm going to name it spline object. As again, I can use this same blueprint for any object I want along this spline. So it just keeps it nice and neat and organized and also reduces the amount of unnecessary blueprints and code we're going to have because we don't need to keep copying and pasting it and duplicating it if we can do it in just one. So we'll open this up straight away as well. Now in here, what we're going to do is I'm going to add in a cube, but you can add in a static mesh of any kind. But again, I'm just testing with a cube. And the only thing we need to do and change with this static mesh here is we want to make sure that the pivot point here isn't in the center of the blueprint. It wants to be at the bottom. So let me explain that a bit more by simply moving up to show you. So you can see I've moved it up and so now this kind of grid here is acting as the floor of the blueprint. So the mesh here is on this grid. Another way to explain it is this kind of icon here for the scene route. We want to make sure that nothing goes below that. And the reason for this is if I compile this and drag it into the level, you can see this is now on the floor. Whereas before, by default, it would have been halfway in the floor of this. We want it to be in the floor. So that way, when it is moving along the spline, it's going to be gliding along the floor nicely like so rather than halfway in like this. So that is why we are doing that. So let's go back into our viewport and once we've done that, that's all perfectly good. And now what you can do as well is if we go to the construction script, if you want to have it so you can use the same object but just switch out what static mesh you are using, you can come into the construction script, drag in the cube and set static mesh like so right click new mesh promote it to a variable and you can name this object mesh drag this under here like so and then with the object mesh variable that we just made still selected tick instance editable and compile it like so and now if we to drag this in here well one you can see it's empty that's because we need to set this to a default value of i'm going to set it to the cube once again so let me just get it from here so I can get the exact same one. So object mesh, and I'm going to set the default value to cube like this. And now you can see we have this object mesh here. If we set this from cube to, let's say, cylinder, you can see we're changing it like so. Now you can see that's not perfect. Easy way to change that, select the static mesh in the details panel up here, 
and you can just move it down like so. But that's just a quick sidetrack. Let's get back onto the rest of the video. That's just if you want to make it more custom and dynamic. So let's go over to the event graph now. And we're going to delete event tick and event act begin overlap. And we only want to use event begin play. However, we're going to come back to that later on as we need to do some other code first. This is just where we're going to be calling code. So underneath this, we're going to right click and get a custom event. And I'm going to name this move object. And as you guessed, this is the code where we're going to be moving the object along the spline. So we're going to drag out of this and add timeline. I'm going to name this T underscore move. Now we're doing a timeline because I want to very smoothly and easily go between a value of point A to point B, that being the start and end of our spline. So a timeline I find is the best way to do this efficiently. We're going to hold alt and left click on the execution pin to disconnect it first of all, as again, I want to make this nice and dynamic and easy to customize. So what we're going to do is add in a new variable and I'm going to name this time to complete. And I'm going to change this from a Boolean to a float. And I'm going to make this instance editable. And if I compile, I'm going to set this to a default value of five. And this is in seconds. So I want it to take five seconds to complete and go around the whole spline path course that I'm going to create. And this means that again, if we were to select this in a level, you see we have time to complete here. So for each individual object we put in, we can change how fast it's going to go and how long it's going to take to go around the whole spline. But how do we actually set this up? So what we can do is drag this into our event graph here. Out of it, we're going to get a divide and we're going to move it from the top to the bottom. And then we're going to put one in the top. So we are doing one divided by our time to complete. And this is going to set the play rate of our timeline. So on the left here, you see under the variables, we also have components. Here, you should have the timeline we just created, which for me is T underscore move. So let me drag this in here and I'm going to set play rate. Connect that into the custom event we created. And then the output variable of the divide is going to go into the new rate here then that will go into play of the timeline so before we call the timeline we want to set how fast it's going to go and this means we can now dynamically change the duration of this timeline without having to actually go in here and change it manually this will do it automatically like so so that again makes it nice and dynamic and custom for us so if we double click the timeline to open it up what you need to do is set the length to one if you don't set it to one this maths here isn't going to work. So we need to set it to one. Press add track and add a float track. And I'm going to name this simply move track. And I'll right click, add key to curve float with a time of zero and a value of zero. Right click, add key to curve float again with a time of zero and a value of one. Sorry, a time of one and a value of one as well. And I can zoom to fit horizontal and vertical. And we just have a nice line going up into the right from zero to one over the course of one second like so so it's going from the start to the end of both the timeline and the spline as well so if we go back into the event graph we can now see we have a move track float variable here out of this we're going to get a lerp and we're going to make sure that the lerp goes into alpha not a and the lerp is essentially going to go between the values of a and b using this timeline track here to smoothly go between them a is going to be representative of the start of our spline path and B is representative of the end. And what we're doing to figure out where we are along the spline path is we're using distance. So A can stay as zero as it just wants to be the start. But how do we get the end distance of the spline? Well, what we can do is add in another new variable and I'm going to name this spline to follow or spline reference, whatever makes the most sense for you. And we're going to set the variable type to be BP underscore spline or whatever it is that you named your first blueprint we created so again mine is bp underscore spline path but whatever it is that you named the blueprint use that and we're going to make this instance editable as well so again we can make it custom for each and every object we're then going to drag this variable into our event graph drag out of it and we're then going to do get spline go all the way to the bottom and you can see we just have get spline here and this is just the spline component we added into the blueprint. So if you change the name of it, then you're going to want to make sure you get that. We're going to drag out of this and we can just very simply get spline length. This can go into B and now we have the total length of the spline completely custom to however long or short we make the spline. And again, if we have multiple ones in the level, it will work custom for that as well. So now this timeline is going to go from the beginning to the end of the spline 
over the course of five seconds. But now how do we make sure that translates into moving the object along this point as well? So we're going to come out of update from the timeline and we're going to set actor location and rotation. And now you see we have a location and rotation here, but how do we go from a float value into a vector and a rotator? Well, very simply, what we can do is drag out of the spline here under the spline to follow again. And we can get a very simple node already made for us called get location at distance along spline with the distance being the return value of our lerp here. And the coordinate space wants to be world, not local as the spline is in a different blueprint to the object. And the return value can go into the new location here perfectly like so. It's as simple as that. And then it is just as equally simple for rotation. We can do the same thing, come out of the spline and get rotation at distance along spline. Distance being that return value of the float from the lerp. Coordinate space being world and the return value going into the new rotation like so. I'm just going to double click these blue lines to keep to create root nodes to keep them looking nice and organized and neat perfectly like this and then that is all we need to do it is as simple as that so we can compile and save this now at the moment this is only going to play once but well, we also need to call it so we'll come out of event begin play and then we will call and then we'll simply do move object to call that function but you don't have to do this on event begin play you can do this wherever you want for example if it's when you walk into a box collision or you unlock something you just call this move object variable and again, this is only going to do this once. So if you want to have it just play once, perfectly fine, leave it as it is. But if you want it to loop, which I do, we can double click the timeline to open it up and then just tick this loop button up here. And that is now just going to loop forever. So we'll compile and save that. And we can close this. And now this should be working perfectly once we have created our spline. So what I'm going to do is delete this object here. And then I'm going to drag in my BP spline path into the level like so. Now, if we zoom right in, you can see we have this kind of white cubes coming off to the side of the actual blueprint origin itself. And if we were to click on this, we can actually move the spline. So this is the end of the spline. And you can see we can now move it by dragging it along like this. And if we were to hold down left alt and drag, we're going to duplicate it, which is then extending it. So we're adding in another spline point. So we can then move it about more like this and create a more custom path. And so this is what we're now doing. You can see this white line here is the path that the object is going to follow. This is the actual spline path that we're talking about. So we can keep duplicating this like so. You can rotate it as well to create a nice smoother turn. And we can even go up if we wanted to. So I can go up like this. Obviously, you can see here that's now going down a bit there. So it's going to go under the ground. So what we can do is rotate this or raise this up a little bit as well. Do whatever works the best for you. Obviously, this isn't going to be perfect for me as I'm just doing this quickly to show you it working. But we can see this is very easy to create nice spline paths like so. So what I'm going to do is just quickly create a nice little loop here going along through this level that we have. And I'll get back to you once I'm finishing up the loops and tell you how to do that nicely as well. So I'm coming back here. I'm ready to close off the loop. What we can do to make it nice and smooth is if you zoom all the way in, you can see this first white cube here. That is the start. So we just want to make sure that we line this up perfectly so they're on top of each other close enough like this. What we can do if you want to get really close is turn off snapping and then make sure they are perfectly on top of each other. And that means the start and end point are the exact same so that when it comes through, it's going to like do a nice smooth loop. So again, this isn't going to be the most perfect path just because I've done it very quickly, but it's close enough where you can see the point and get the point across. And you can see that that's actually not perfect. I was kind of not in the right perspective at all. So let me just fix it up a little bit more by moving this down. That looks a lot better like so. So again, you can see this might not be perfect, but it's going to get the point across of how it works. So now what we can do is once you've got your path and you're happy with it, we can drag in our BP spline object and we're going to move it to the beginning of our spline path. We're going to put it at the start like so. Then you can see we have our customizations down here. I'm going to keep it as the cube mesh and I'm going to keep it at five seconds to complete it. And then if we move this out a little bit first, so we can actually see this origin point of the blueprint. We can tick the eyedropper tool from spline to follow and then pick the spline that we want it to follow, which is this one here. I move it back on top. And now if we to simulate, we should see this should work perfectly and follow this spline along like so. So let's hit simulate and see if this works. So as you can see, the cube is following along this path like so. It's following along perfectly. 
following the location, the height, the rotation, everything that we want. Now, what we can do is if I select this and I say I want it to take 10 seconds, it should go half the speed. So it should take twice as long. So if I now press simulate, you can see it is going along a lot slower. So you might prefer this speed. Again, that's how easy it is to change how fast it's going to go along the spline like this. And with that, I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything that we wanted to do. What we've done is we've very simply created a spline path that's going along through our level and customized how if we want. And we also have an object following along that spline path perfectly, following the location and rotation. And again, we've also set up so we can customize the object, the time to complete, and also which path it is going along as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel a lot. We're trying to hit 100,000 su subscribers, so every subscriber does really help. And I would also appreciate if you would share the channel as well, as again, that really helps me too. So thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.